We've got drama at Stability, a deal with directors, and AI replacing nearly 4,000 jobs just last month. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in five minutes or less. Remember, you can get this in the morning as a newsletter as well. It's at the AI Breakdown.beehive, that's spelled B E E H I I V dot com. Today, we kick off with a story that is sure to make headlines everywhere. A new research report from Challenger Gray and Christmas says that last month, employers laid off about 80,000 people across the U.S. Of those, 3,900 were from AI, just under 5%. That made AI the seventh biggest cause of job losses last month. But you have to think it's going to be the number one most discussed cause of job losses. Now, this is significant in the sense that people often think about AI jobs impacts as something that might be farther out. But statistics like this suggest that it's happening right now. Next up, a potential deal in the Hollywood writer strike. Recently, writers in Hollywood have been on strike for a number of reasons, of which AI was one. Writers had sought guarantees from studios that they wouldn't be replaced by AI, and instead all the studios were initially willing to do was hold a meeting once a year to discuss new developments in the technology with them. The fear that writers had is that they would be marginalized by studio executives seeing AI as a way to cut costs. So imagine instead of hiring writers in a traditional way, you have ChatGPT write a script and then have writers who are being paid on a contractual basis just punch it up or something like that. Now, over the weekend, we saw some progress in these strikes with the Directors Guild of America announcing a tentative deal with the studios. As part of that deal, the DGA said that they had received a, quote, groundbreaking agreement confirming that AI is not a person and that generative AI cannot replace the duties performed by members. On the one hand, some saw this as a very positive development, but on the other, some people were looking at the devil in the details. David Allen Mack writes, I suspect this wording, generative AI cannot replace the duties performed by members, will come back to haunt them. Replace? No. But augment? Be a mandatory collaborator? Why not? Now, impact on jobs is one of the AI fears that some people say is more pressing than the extinction conversation that has been getting so much airtime lately. Recently, AI researchers and scientists like Jeffrey Hinton and Yashua Bengio have been making headlines for their dire warnings about what AI might do if left unchecked. In a recent interview, however, Kyun Yung Cho, another prominent AI researcher, says that this discourse is kind of leading us astray. He said that these quote-unquote doomer narratives are distracting from the real issues, both positive and negative, posed by today's AI. Now, Cho is known in this community for his foundational work on neural machine translation, which helped lead to the development of the transformer architecture that was used in GPT and ChatGPT, and so he knows a little bit about what he's talking about. Indeed, Bengio was one of his former supervisors. Cho warned of overly glorifying a narrative of hero scientists and also had pretty harsh words for the effective altruist movement. He said, I am very aware of the fact that the EA movement is the one that is actually driving the whole thing around AGI and existential risk. I think there are too many people in Silicon Valley with this kind of savior complex. Now, interestingly, Gary Marcus, who just testified alongside Sam Altman in front of Congress and who is very concerned about a number of different issues that relate to AI, has also come out loudly with a similar argument in the last couple of weeks, saying that we're effectively spending too much time on the existential risk questions and not enough time on the more pressing and immediate questions. Now, even as all this gets debated in the media and in policy circles, companies in the AI space continue to proceed at a blistering pace. However, over the weekend, one of those companies, Stability AI, was set back just a little bit by some drama around a Forbes article, which argued that its CEO had a habit of misrepresentation, fabrication, exaggeration, and even outright lying. Now, Ahmad, the CEO in question, almost immediately published a long list of responses to the article. And I think wherever you land on it, it shows the type of thing that is likely to happen the more that these companies are in the public spotlight. Rightly or wrongly, everyone involved is going to be under intense, intense scrutiny. Finally, let's close the day on one of the more exciting visual tools we've seen for a while. This is called Google Style Drop, and effectively, it's an approach to text to image that can use a reference image to create a set of other images all in the style of that first image. So some of the reference examples they have are a watercolor image of flowers, an old sort of 90s line graphic design, and Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night. The results where Style Drop is prompted to create an object in the style of that reference image are pretty remarkable. Now, this is all powered by Muse, which is a text-to-image generative vision transformer. The summary of the research paper says, Style Drop works by efficiently learning a new style of fine-tuning, very few trainable parameters, and improving the quality via iterative trading with either human or automated feedback. 
Better yet, StyleDrop is able to deliver impressive results even when the user supplies only a single image specifying the desired style. An extensive study shows that, for the task of style tuning text to image models, StyleDrop on Muse convincingly outperforms other methods, including DreamBooth and textual inversion on Imogen or Stable Diffusion. This tool is likely to be extraordinarily useful for designers who are trying to keep things in a particular aesthetic. And that's basically any designer who's creating anything more than just a single one off image. From a creative side, imagine a graphic novel that needs all the images to conform to a particular style or mode or vibe. And then think about brand designers who have to keep everything within the guidelines or the particular aesthetic of an enterprise or company. While this remains just in research right now, it's one of the tools that I'm more excited about than just about anything else I've seen for the last couple of months. And I mean that from the standpoint of a practical, I want to use it right now kind of way. Anyways, guys, that is it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you're enjoying it, please like, subscribe, and share, and turn on your notifications. And I will be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.